Uh, hi there, Vanessa here from Being Yoga. Nice to be back in the garden with you. You can come on into a hands and knees position to get started. And just starting with some cat's breath. So inhaling through the front of the body, opens and as you exhale, rounding through the back. Inhale, send the heart forward and lift the sit bones high. And exhaling, doming through the upper back. And you can continue like this, or if you'd like to, start to create a, a wave-like motion. So maybe rocking the hips back and creating that doming as you come forward. And the inhale, sending the hips back and the chest forward. Exhaling, doming as you come forward, navel to spine. And exhaling, pressing back. Maybe tucking the toes towards you, inhale. We inhale back, exhale, there's that navel to spine rounding. Maybe taking it a little bit further, moving back towards an extended child's pose and rippling forward. It's probably tricky on the microphone. Sorry if it sounds weird. And adding in a little halfway lift and then, or a chaturanga type position and pressing back, doming to come forward, normalize through the spine, lower halfway down and sending the hips back. And one last time like that. And then making your way towards the hands and knees. I like to bring the left leg underneath so that there's stability there. And then working with the breath still. So inhale to send the leg back and exhaling, coiling. Inhale, send the leg back. Keep the leg lifted here and taking a few push-up type positions. So. Exhaling down, inhale to lift, tone the belly. And if you want more work, focus on lifting that leg higher. Doing this three, maybe five times. And then lift up onto fingertips. We'll get off our wrists for a moment, maybe straightening through the back leg as well. Hands into Namaste. Inhale, interlace the fingers, lift the elbows high. Exhale to press the palms away. Inhale the arms all the way up overhead. And then releasing and lowering that back knee back onto the earth and stretching the right leg back. So now exhaling right knee to the right shoulder. Inhaling to open and send the leg back and looking over to the left. And then right knee to shoulder and over. Great. And last one. Then coming through a plank position, a easy plank. Um, you can straighten both legs up if you wanted to or keep both knees down and then exhaling to lower down. Rise up into Sphinx or Cobra, lengthening the chest forward and toes back. And then lowering yourself down, rise up through a push-up position to downward facing dog. And doing that same movement with the right leg. So inhale the right leg up. Exhaling, coiling forward, inhale up. This time, right knee to the right tricep, try and stay high there. And then sending the leg back behind you. Same sort of movement, travel forward, travel back. And then stay back and walk the hands back. So you're coming into a uh, Adha Chandrasana position, maybe right hand onto the hip here as you hold, perhaps reaching the right arm up or you could catch. 
spinning the chest open. And then from here, release. Stretch your right hand over to the floor, to the earth. And then I've got a slippery mat, I can slide forward. Um, left knee to the floor. Take the left leg back and then just working into, uh, it's like a Gomukhasana position here. So folded, um, the knees are folded into one another and the hips are off the floor. And you're just going into a bit of a stretch in that outer left hip. If you need to, you could walk the hands over to the right side a little. And a couple of breaths here, as long as there's no pain in the knee. Ah, very nice to be out in the garden. All right, to return back into a hands and knees position and your choice. You could rest into child's pose or if you wanted to take this rippling spine movement again. Even turning that into downward facing dog, rippling spine if you wanted. Rounding as you travel forward. Hips lift as you move back. And the last one, enjoying that last round. And then return to your hands and knees again. So once again, I like to have the uh, right knee under as the left leg lifts or other leg, whichever one you didn't do earlier. And exhaling, coiling nose to knee. Inhale to stretch the leg up and back and exhaling, coiling. Opening out, working the glute to lift a little higher. And then keep that leg lifted, tone through the belly and lowering down. So three, maybe five times, push up kind of position, navel to spine and really working the glute to lift the leg up higher. And keep the leg lifted. And then from here, you can lift up onto fingertips, draw the knee into the chest, stepping forward and straightening that back leg, getting off that back knee. Inhale to interlace the fingers, lift the elbows high, press the palms away. Inhale, stretching all the way up. Brighten through the legs, interlacing behind the back of the body, reach the knuckles back, lift and open. And then releasing hand, touching down, knee to the floor again and stretching that leg back and going side to side here. So um, left knee taps. That's your exhale, the inhale, moving over to the right side. So I'm doing uh, opposite legs. Whichever one you didn't do before, leaning in. Use your exhale to shorten through that left side waist and let the spine move from side to side. Great, okay, send the leg back, pause, either full plank or a half plank position, lift as you lower yourself down, find a back bend, it could just be your connecting vinyasa if you like, exhaling to lower, rise up through your full or a half push up into downward facing dog. Send the left leg to the sky, again engaging through the glute there. And once knee into the chest, coming forward. Inhale up and back. And then exhale, tap the left armpit. 
inhale, stretch the leg back and like we did on hands and knees, try and take it over to the right side. And again, tap and opening out and keep that open position. Walk back and finding your Ada Chandrasana and whichever variation you did. So as you walk back, you want to make sure that most of the weight is on the right foot and that the fingers are just there for balance and support. Don't even need them if you don't want to. And then release. Walking forward once again and bringing the back knee down onto the earth. Cross the leg over behind like we did previously, um, but this time bending the knees and coming into this Gomukhasana position. So you could maybe walk the elbows over to the left side a little here. You're looking for a stretch in that outer left hip. Uh, would you believe it's an outer right hip stretch? Who'd have thought? You can utilize your breath and just let go, melt and soften. And then coming full circle, return back to your hands and knees and choosing either this rippling hands and knees position or your rippling down dog shape. But eventually just let the tide turn to eventually come into stillness, allowing the knees to separate and the forehead to rest on the earth. And you could finish the practice here, or if you'd like to continue on on your own, I'd highly recommend a spinal twist before Shavasana. Or you could just take child's pose as Shavasana as well. Thank you so much for your practice. Good on you. Namaste.